the delayed entrance just builds up the suspense. Not at all what I was going for. I 100% forgot what I was doing for a second, which is kind of hilarious and kind of scary at the same time. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Everyday EDC. My name is Tyler, and today we are going to review this fucking interesting piece. All right. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the James Brand Balsam. Um, yeah, let me uh, kind of get going here. So, some of you may not even care about this freaking knife. So, to add for a little bit more entertainment, I have to get rid of these peppers, so I figured it would be entertaining for us all to do this together. All I'm going to do is just cut this tip off right there. I'm only even cutting it just to cut it. There's no reason to cut this. I could have just bit it, but I'm going to stick it in some ranch because this is quite a pepper. You guys already know this thing's freaking hot. It's not It's not like a ghost pepper or anything, but... Uh, I mean, it's hot enough to make doing a review after eating one of these pain in the ass. Uh, down the hatch. I'm still chewing. Ooh. Oh, man. Makes you want to slap your grandma. Ah. Let me say it. I got to drink here. Alrighty, so today we have the James Brand Balsam. <clears throat> interesting little knife. Ooh. Interesting, interesting little knife. This. I forget what I was saying again. Fucking heat. This is a company made, uh, named James Brand. Um. <clears throat> I might be able to get my hands on another one of their knives, which I was much more impressed with, even though I didn't like it as much as this in the beginning. Uh, but that's the Carter. They have another another knife called the Carter. They have one that's... Shit, I don't remember the names of the other ones. It's one of those... If you ever watch Cedric and Ada, he talks about those knife companies that sell knives to people and jack up the price and market them as a... Like, gentleman's knife. Okay? So, just take that, and let's move on. Um, James Brand. Comes out with some pretty artsy stuff. This is like an artsy style thing, which I didn't know when I first got it. And it's it's an interesting piece. It is feeling very sleek. It's got this, I'm thinking this is an aluminum backspacer, but let's see if I can get a magnet over here. Magnet over there heat on my breath so I know it's sticking to the steel liners <laughs> that that didn't do me any freaking good alright so I'm gonna get into some specs I'm gonna go into some size comparisons for you guys on this James brand Folsom and then we are going to talk about the knife and my overall feelings on the knife by comparison to where they were in the past. So the James Brand Folsom's coming in at, holy shit, 3.3 ounces. Not at all what I expected out of this little bastard. But then again, it does feel kind of like a little dense. Uh, the overall length is half of what I just did. So the overall length of this guy's coming in at about seven and th or six and three quarters. The blade length is coming in at just about three with the cutting edge of about three. As we can see down here, there's really no sharpening choil, despite my piss poor sharpening job back in the day that you guys really can't see down towards the ed edge. <laughs> I'm creating something there because I left a shit ton of metal. You see that little like pin prick right there? That was from me sharpening everything but that piece. And that's probably what happens when you don't have a sharpening choil. Not that it matters, I mean, it's the same thing. Now it's just something that sticks out. What I could do is probably just take a Dremel and deal with it. <clears throat> and then last but not least, blade stock thickness, etc., etc., etc. All right. Relatively thin, coming at just at 0.1, 100 thousandths. Check the thickness behind the edge. Uh, 
frustratingly, the thickness behind the edge on this guy. I'm just frustrated overall. I'm going to try not to be biased on this, but I'm kind of frustrated overall with this knife. The thickness behind the edge on this overall is 20 thousandths. Um, you're starting with a 100 thousandths range with a full flat grind, and we got to 20 thousandths. That, that annoys me a little bit. Uh, a little bit more. I need to stop being negative on this guy. He wasn't that bad. The overall thickness of this is really thin. This is coming in at 38 380 thousandths. The overall height of this in your pocket, it's not terrible. <laughs> 1.27, as we know, the PM2 is coming in at 1.6, plus or minus. All right, <clears throat> now let's do some size comparisons for you guys. We'll start out with the Savivi Doris and the Savivi Dogma. Obviously, the Dogma is dwarfing this, and so is the Doris. So you can tell this is a fairly small freaking knife, right? Alright, so I grabbed two of the wrong ones. Blame it on the heat. Alright, so here is the Rat Model 1 and the Rat Model 2. Obviously you can tell that the Rat Model 1 is decimating this in size as far as it's just making it look tiny as shit. And the Rat Model 2 is not doing much different. I mean, the Rat Model 2 is making it look pretty small, too. Um, I'm going to show two more. I'm going to show the Spyderco Astute and the Mini Feldspar because, obviously, this knife is a small knife. There's no reason to show the PM2 when you already know it's going to come in at a super small Like So the Spyderco Astute looking big, once again, next to this guy. And the Feldspar is probably the closest thing I got by comparison to this. So here's those. All right, let's talk a little bit about this knife. Let's go over everything. Granted, I have had it. I have beat the shit out of it, and the action on it has been piss poor since I got it, but that was before I knew what the hell I was doing with anything. I could probably rehab this a little bit. So right here, we have an ambidextrous pocket clip. It is not deep carry, but it is a pretty cool pocket clip. All it has is it's really low profile, and it just goes swoop, swoop. That's it. Uh, so it's not bad. And that's James Brand's logo right there. Pretty cool emblem. Um, it's not a bad pocket clip. It's not deep carry, though. And for something this sleek, I would really, really like to see this as a deep carry. Um, I haven't touched on the Ergos yet, but if you're going to have something that's like a wannabe thinness of the bug out, like, do it, right? You know... It's a gentleman's folder. You don't want a knife sticking out of your pocket unless it's like super elegant on the top, and this one really isn't. Um, the handle, the handle material is a slightly grippy G10. You know, you got your little bit of contoured scales, no contoured scales, but you got your little bit of cutout in the scales right here. Um, so, hatefully enough, you guys cannot see this, but on the show side, there is nothing cut out of the liner. On the non-show side, down here, there is one small hole cut out. And actually, if you look at those liners, they could have thinned the shit out of this guy, but those liners are thick. Thicky, thicky, thick girl. So, yeah. Um, they could have done a lot of weight relieving on this had they wanted to, but the weight in it actually feels interesting. It's, it's a different feel. You have this tiny little guy in your hands. Am I going to go cut down a shit ton of boxes? Maybe, but probably not. Um, so I don't mind the weight in a small knife like this. It kind of makes it feel quality. Uh, I'm mistaking weight for quality. Um, balance, well, that's because I'm balanced on the pocket clip. So, finger chopped off. Balance is right about there. Not great. I had two fingers on there. Not great. Um, let's see here. So you guys can see where I'm at. It's not awful. Not great. It's a little bit further back than you would like, but it's probably because of this aluminum, I'm assuming, backspacer. Which the green aluminum backspacer and the green lanyard hole, which isn't emphasized in really anything, is pretty cool. Let's check some hardware. 
The pivot is a T8, and the rest of the body screws are T6 along with the pocket clip screws. Fantastic. So this is a typical drop point blade with this hole right here, which is basically your only method of opening it. Now, can I spidey flick it? Nah. Can I slow roll it? Yeah. Um, do I need to rehab this? Definitely. Um, let's see here. I haven't touched this knife since I kind of learned anything about knives. James Brand kind of pissed me off with these. Once I learned what I bought, like at first I was like, these are so cool. And then I bought it, and you'll understand in a second why it irritates me. Um, so yeah, it's a very tight movement there. I gotta take it apart and see really what the guts are. Um, it looks like a phosphor bronze washer on either side. So you can't you can't really spidey flick it. You can slow roll it. Now can I get my finger in there to spidey flick it? That's what I got. It's just the tip right there. Now if you have a nail, sure you can nail it. I don't have nails. Um, I do, but they're useless. So, A, this isn't coming down to a super thin edge. The liner lock is a stainless steel liner, it's fine. The fit and finish of this is pretty darn good. Frustrating. The price point. The price point on this coming in right at about $100 to $110. I think they dropped their price since I had recently bought this, and they kind of came out with some different models with different you know, G10 handles, different colors or whatever. Um, but, and, and yeah, they have the serrated, half serrated, half not, blah, blah, blah. Um, some jimping up here, which is relatively functional. You know, not a big deal. But $100. What is the blade steel on this? CTS of BD1. Right there. For a $100 price point, in everything that I have felt uh, up until this point, once I started learning things, uh, no. <laughs> no, thank you. Why? Because it just doesn't feel like a $100 knife. Um, it, it feels like you're upselling it because you wanted to say it's classy and, you know, uh, I don't know, but you know, I'm not hating on James Brand. I did like the Carter, hated the thumb disc. It came with a thumb disc and not a thumb stud. And I was like, what the fuck? But, um, I, I don't really have much to say. I don't want to keep ragging on this. I, it should have a deep carry pocket clip. The ergonomics on it are that of a gentleman's knife. What is a gentleman going to do? Cut open your envelope for you. Slice an apple for you. You know, that type of stuff. You're not going to go do some heavy work. Do I feel like I could do some heavy work? Kind of, but even without, uh, you know, any type of toil or anything, it's, it's, the way I'm holding this, even if I hold it straight, yeah, you got some room, but holding it like I normally would hold it like this, you know, my pinky's falling off. I don't know. I'm just not impressed with this at all anymore. It was the first knife I got. I was super impressed with it. You know, the emblem, his name on there, James, with a little freaking, you know, circle at the top. Can't tell if that's like a trademark symbol or something. You know, you got the green with the black, which looks really cool. The black G10, which is like kind of smooth. It's not, it's, it's, it's textured, but it feels kind of smooth. But it feels, you know, quality. It just doesn't, I mean, I feel like you should have threw a nail nick on this knife and made it like that if that's what you were going for. It, it doesn't feel like something, um, and, and I, I sure as shit wouldn't pay $100 for this. Uh, when you have so many other $100 knives out there, or, you know, $50 knives out there, or $45 knives out there, or, you know, $30 knives out there, or $50 knives out there, like, like these dwarf the James Brand's attempt at, at this. Now, like I said, the card rep for $140 it has a VG10 steel. Um, you know, I don't know that I would pay that again once I know what the hell I'm talking about, kind of, to an extent. Um, it's, it's a better knife. But once again, the price point, it's like, what? And then they came out with this one knife that I was looking at before I knew what I was doing, and the knife itself was like a $400 knife for a knife this size, the chapter, 
chapter. I never got my hands on a chapter, and if you guys have ever seen one, let me know your thoughts on it, because it looks pretty, pretty cool. But knowing what I know now, I don't know that I would want to ever go after the chapter. I don't even think the steel on it... I don't remember what the steel on it was. Like an S35B or something like that. But for $400, you know, like... I don't have a problem with S35, but $400, you're in... I don't know. Overall thoughts, it is a classy knife. They hit that right on the mark. has an ambidextrous pocket clip. The ergonomics for cutting open envelopes is just fucking fantastic. The ergonomics for doing anything heavier than that, you know, take it for what you will. The lanyard tube on this is pretty cool looking. I like the green mixed with the black. Talking about fit and finish. Look at that. Just found a problem. It's not even fucking... Actually, like, the lanyard tube is not positioned properly, which is interesting. Um, it's, it's a little pushback on one side, so knock on fit and finish right there. Not a huge thing. Not a big deal. I, I came into this with a bias, and I shouldn't have, but um, it's an interesting piece. I like the weight, and it, it feels... I, I do like the 3.3 ounces or whatever it was, because it's a smaller knife. It feels dense. It feels actually solid. Do I think this will stand the test of time? Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like a little tank. But you're getting a little tank feel in a gentleman's knife. It just all seems kind of counterintuitive. I think whatever they were going for when they did this missed the mark a little bit. I think it looks super cool. And then you see the pocket clip and you see other pocket clips, you're like, nah. You know, I hate the fact that the action on them suck. And, and I didn't know action when I first got this. I didn't know what action really even was, right? You get it, and you don't realize that there's a freaking fidget factor to knives. You can sit there and do that, you know, like, I'll sit in my car and bloop. But, you know, this, it's, yeah, no. Yeah. Super tight, super locked up. You know, even if I take it to where the blade's loose. But, so I didn't really know action either, and it's kind of like, all right, so what are we doing here? You know, you can spidey flick this, I guess, a little bit if it's loose, but when I loosen it up to that point, the blade is super loose and up there, side to side blade play. As far as front or back blade play, there's none. Overall thoughts on this knife, it's a good, it's, just, it's a knife. It'll cut. It's kind of gentlemanly. Um, would I pay 100 to 110 for it again? No. No, no, no. Um, this, if you're competing with the Civivis, with the, you know, all those things, the Tucson's, the best decks. No. No, no, no. So, I don't even know their heat treat. I, I like how well it is, because nobody really reviews these knives, and nobody really tests these knives, so maybe I'll send this off to somebody, see if they want to test it. Or I'll, I'm not going to try a half-assed attempt at testing it, because that data won't mean shit. The James Brand Folsom. That was kind of a lackluster ending. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Tyler. This is Everyday EDC. Stay sharp, stay safe, have a great freaking day.